There is no Neil Francis is the debut album from Neil Francis, who are a band. Mark and Jordan, gentlemen, Hello. thank you so much for your time and being here. I appreciate it. Thanks, Pete. Thank you for having us. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I put that out there because of the fact, obviously, Neil Francis is such a common name. And I must point out that you guys played Outside Lands just recently. Yeah. Where Neil Francis, yeah. the performer. Neil himself. Yes, performed yeah. as well. Not so, Neil themselves. Right. I don't think he goes, I don't think he's a they anyway. Yeah. He doesn't seem like the type. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> so for my mom, who really is curious about all this, and I'm sure people are as well, I know the answer, but if you could just explain the origins of, of yeah. that. So the, the, the name originated, Mark and I were like putting together a project, and I think we may have coming out to like our first release and we're like we need a name for the project and we kind of like were putting our heads together and we didn't really land on anything and just one day i just kind of like what about my my dad and my mom's first names which is neil and francis yeah uh nice and sure sounds good <laughs> I, we didn't have any other ideas really hey, I, mean, I mean i not to speak for you but i think you like the idea of the kind of like it's not someone the mystery behind it you got to dig a little bit deeper to oh, did i find yeah i think he did <laughs> and like I like that too yeah, a little bit. Have. You know, it's like no one else, is, no one is in the band actually Neil Francis, and it's kind of a constant laugh at this point where people are like, "Wait, you're not Neil," or coming up. We and asking we Neil. did not foresee the issues that would come. It's interesting that you are releasing your debut album here in 2022, but this friendship extends 10 years, basically, right? Yeah, this yeah, is the time. 10 year anniversary. Pretty much. Oh, dude, which, pretty much. Yeah, look at that. And if people listen to you speak, Jordan, you yeah. are not from Los Angeles. That's true. Uh, let alone California or anything. Yeah. You were brought uh, over to the U.S. to chase your dreams, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. What was your intention before meeting up with Mark? My intention was to be a world-beating DJ um, from Sydney, Australia. And I did that for like five or six years uh when i first toured that project i met mark and he was in a band at the time we kind of hit it off like fast forward a little bit i uh produced a song for his old band and did a remix for his old band but my yeah my focus at that time was like i want to i want to be a house and techno music dj and uh to kind of test myself i guess my plan was i want to move to the uk and see if i can really do this and um so this was just to be a pit stop yeah, I mean, more or less. I mean, this is this is bef yeah. So, this was kind of like a like a like a, a few tours out here, which is where I met Mark. But then, yeah, I, I moved to the UK in like 2014 or so, and um, chased that dream. And it didn't go the way I wanted it to go, which was like in retrospect the best thing that could have happened, which was cool. You learn a lot from mistakes, and uh, serendipitously, Mark was in New York basically the same amount of time that I was in London. I moved back. To, I moved to LA. He moved back to LA in the same week as one another, and a mutual friend was like, "Hey, you know Mark's uh, around?" I was like, "Oh, cool." And then I like sent him some beats to sing top lines over, and like the rest is sort of history. We kind of started around 2016, 17, taking it seriously, and mm -hmm. here we are on stage. We're like, "Ah, oh, it's not us, right?" <laughs> and right. I know. I know he's getting the same, <laughs> yeah. You know, coming on his end. So it's kind of it's kind of funny. But what an honor for your parents, though. Yeah, that's true. That's true. They must have been pleased. Yeah, to I say mean, the they, least. They, they were, and actually, you know, it's funny. I know how you you were saying before we jumped on here that like you want to be able to be able to show your mum these things and for them to make sense. And I think it made me think like that's one thing that I kind of dig about our music is I always send out like an email when we have a new song coming out, and my dad and my mum always respond, obviously because they're my dad and my mum. But also, like I think it's music that they can appreciate as well. So I think it's just a nice little homage. Your music is fantastic. I was at the show here in San Francisco last night. Oh, really? You're doing two cool. shows here. Yeah. And you just killed it. And before the show, you know, I'm, I'm waiting. I got my camera. I'm, I'm you know, anticipating what, what's going to happen. And just people were abuzz. And, and I heard, you know, overheard people talking about, oh, I hope they play this. I hope they play that and so forth and so on. And, yeah. But they, cool. didn't, they weren't really clear as to what your presentation was going to be. Yeah. So when you're creating this music, I'm, I'm sure live elements in the presentation is in your head. Mm -hmm. But has, was, was what you're doing now kind of the, the initial focus because of the fact this is your debut album? Yeah. I think that we, we there are definitely moments in writing 
where we'll take a step back and we're like, oh my God, how the hell are we going to do that live? Because we do use a lot of uh, MIDI synthesis. We use a lot of like, we use analog synths. We, we have analog drum machines in the studio and figuring out how to get that robotic kind of like dance floor feel from a human playing those parts is difficult. And so we've, we've been, we spent a lot of time uh, programming all of our MIDI sequencers. We don't have any tracks. We don't have a computer on stage. There's no backing vocals, none of that. And so we like, yeah, it takes a lot of time. Can, going from the studio version to the live version is like, I mean, we were pre prepping for this tour for, you know, minimum two weeks. And we were in the studio almost every day of those two weeks, like 12 hour days, just like trying to figure out how to recreate some of the things that we're doing on the album. Um, so it's not, it's not like, I don't think that we, we, we withhold certain ideas in the songwriting process because we don't think we can do them live, but there's certainly like this moment after we're done with the song and we're like, oh God, can we? <laughs> right. Like how, what kind of a version is this going to be? So that's kind of a... Yeah, and that's always a quandary to try to put out music that you love, that you are proud of. Yeah. And whether it's a studio version or a live version, it is what it is, right? Yeah, you figure right. that out later. Right, yeah. yeah. And the live versions, you know, they have more energy. They're, lo they're, they're, there are more errors, of course, you know. There's, it's not perfection, but I think that it's a, it's a thing in itself, so maybe that's okay. Yeah, know? it's a kind of a, it's kind of a fun concept to, like, take the recorded stuff and then build on it with the band because we don't really take the time to do that in the recording process mm -hmm. we collaborate with a bunch of people and we collaborate with everyone in the band not to say that we don't but yeah. like yeah it's just predominantly Mark and I so it's kind of cool some of these songs when we play them live have these like extended elements and parts that aren't in the song that you've got to come yeah, to the show yeah or just like accents so. that just hit a little harder yeah. you know what I mean mm -hmm. like Greg and Rhythm our bass and drummer are just like really locked and they 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 do a lot live that's beyond the record you know and i think that really helps um with the show so and what i find really interesting i don't know who which one of you said it but you really didn't intend for these songs to have mark on lead a lot of the songs were intended for other people to sing in particular females yeah uh, female vocalists to sing and, and you were pretending in your falsetto yeah singing these songs right that 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 was is more is more true for the beginning of our writing relationship. When we first started writing together, we, I wasn't trying to be a pop music singer, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I don't think Jordan was trying to play in a band. He was kind of thinking, Hey, I can, I'm a producer. I can like, you know, write these songs and, and figure out a way to release them somehow. I was thinking like, yeah, you know, I'll sing some melodies over the top of it. And we both kind of aligned on like, Oh yeah, could get like someone to sing this and for some reason that was like what we latched onto creatively and um i think that that was kind of like liberating for us both because it didn't feel like we were writing a project that was like some perfect representation of who we are or our, our identity and what you know our statement to the world we were just trying to write good pop music um and so that's how the whole band started well i'm totally digging this album thank you thanks. like i said live interpretation is just phenomenal and Thanks. congratulations on this release thank you so much thank appreciate you. your time cheers yeah great to meet you yeah, thanks for coming through it is neil francis and you're watching b-sides mm -hmm.